So it's been another 24 hours since Last Epoch 1.0 has launched. We now are officially into day four of the launch of 1.0. And it looks like the service stability still exists. Although I would say it has drastically improved. Now, I want to preface it by saying every area and every individual is having different experiences. I can only speak to my experience and what I'm hearing and people that are coming onto my live stream. For example, I know a lot of the players, for example, that were in my chat on my stream from the Europe region were complaining about not being able to get on. Uh, and we know from past history that last epoch, if there was one area where it literally needed a big improvement when it comes to service stability, it was already known Europe was one of them. At least that's what I've heard. Now, I again played for another six or seven hours in the evening and had no issues. I th no, I don't think, no, I never had any LE61 errors. Uh, the transitions into different zones and different scenes was, um, was seamless. Actually, I find it that it's the, the, when you're walking into an area, when the issue was really big, I had to click to go to the next scene. Whereas now, as my character approaches the path where you got to enter, as soon as the character comes close to that door um, or path, it automatically loads me into the next area. So it, already I'm seeing uh, improvements from my experience. But today is day four. It's Saturday, uh, Saturday morning. And I wanted to, again, do a deep dive into what the player base is currently. And the other thing I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to give everyone a flavor and review kind of the comments and the player feedback I'm getting, uh, not only on my stream, but on this video, I'm going to go and dive into the comments from my last video about, you know, what's wrong with last epoch, the technical non-technical video of mine. And I want to see what everyone is saying and kind of like what has been their experience so far. So if we go into Steam DB currently, oh, let me refresh it. Currently, there's 224,745 players playing the game. And like I said yesterday in my video, when we were in the 170, 180, I believe, range. And then it dipped down into the evening. I think it dipped down to around 150, 160. Um, I said in my video yesterday, like, I suspect on the weekend, it's going to go north of 200. How north? Who knows? Well, here's the answer so far. We have hit the 24-hour peak as we speak. And as you can see, this just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Players are coming to this game in droves. This is so remarkable watching it live and seeing just how crazy it's getting here. Like, look at this. Again, we're in the morning of Saturday. So I would suspect afternoon and Tonight, we'll see what happens uh, over the weekend, how big and what the 24-hour peak is going to do. Also, I wanted to look and give an update on the um, review bombing, and it is still showing a positive review. Now, that number has jumped up a little bit. If you remember from my last video, we were in the 72 range, if I'm not mistaken. Now, it went up a point, and again... A lot more positive reviews, but still the negative reviews are still coming. And of course, if players are having problems with logging into the game or transitioning scenes, of course, they're going to review bomb them. Um, however, again, like I said in my video yesterday, this is a testament to the game. Even with all these issues of people not being able to play the game, they 
the majority of players, 73% of them, are saying this game is worth playing. And that's a big statement in the face of all of these issues. Now, let's get into the comments and what the players are saying that it came on to my comment section on my videos from yesterday. And this is the video, what's the problem? A technical take from a non-techie. And I'm not gonna go into the video, but basically it was me trying to kinda take the behind the curtains look at what potentially could be issues that are causing these server issues. And we got into some technical stuff. But anyway, I wanted to read some of the comments. And so I haven't read them. So I'm going to read them uh, with you and I'll give you my reaction. So here we go. After coming from D4, let me say the online issues last epoch is having bothers me 0%. Offline mode allows you to use global chat, which is amazing. The, wow, I didn't know in offline mode you can still use global chat. Interesting. This game has so many great things. Itemization, crafting, build variety, leg legendary potential, and, one, and it will only get better with more endgame and uber bosses. Loving this game. Dragon Dice, thank you for the comment. Um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, guys, the server issues are going to go away. Um, the fact is, when you look, like to me personally, review should be about the quality of the game. But I understand why there are negative reviews right now, because players can't log into the game. So I get it. And as a player, if you purchase the game and you can't log in, you have the right to complain about that. So I get it. But personally, myself, I would really like this review system that we have specifically on Steam really should be about the game. But I get why people are frustrated. You can't log into a game. That's And you paid for that, right? You paid and you were told you were going to be able to play offline or online. Um, and you're not getting it. So I get it. The game has a lot of check marks. And remember, this is 11th hour games first step into full release. Okay. 1.0 is them leaving early access coming to full release with their first major launch with 1.0 and their very first cycle, which is for D4, it's a season. And PoE refers to it as a league. So in Last Epoch, it's referred to as a cycle. So Dragon Dice is completely 100% accurate in my opinion. This game has amazing itemization, amazing craft building, legendary, like everything he says is accurate. And, and I agree with him. That's been my experience too. Okay, Nikon Live, 40 euros for the game, even with all the downtime, I'm sure I will get value for my money. Now, I would assume Nikon is from Europe since he's quoting the game in euros. And here is someone that I'm sure is experiencing a lot of downtime because it seems like that is where a lot of the problems are. And I know they're everywhere, guys, so don't get don't misquote me. But uh, Europe, at least people coming in my chat from Europe are telling me the same thing. They're having a lot of they can't play the game. Um, but even with that, he sh he's convinced he's going to get value for his money. Okay, Around the Fur, 1210. This is a great game and very deserving of its success. It's unfortunate that the moment of glory for EHG will be marred by the server issues. Mad respect for them, including an offline mode. But I came to play with my friends and I really have to... I have no desire to make a tune offline and then re-roll again once service stability is fixed. Fair comment. Some people, I don't care there's offline mode. I want to play with my friends online. So that's a fair criticism. I'm already nearly two years into this game from the beta and I'm fairly fatigued on making new characters. At this point, I think it would go a long way to help players like me if EAG would offer to transfer our offline characters to the online service once everything has been corrected. Wow, that is a very interesting comment. 
that that is very well said around the fur. Um, you know what? Everything we've seen from Eleventh Hour Games, I would not be surprised if this was brought up and made very vocal to them. I wonder if they would consider that. I have no idea of the technical aspect of doing that. I don't know what that involves technically, but that is a very good suggestion. Look, you guys created a game that had online mode. We couldn't get in. We were forced to play offline. I want to be able to transfer that character online once the problems are done. I think that's a fair ask. Very, very, very good suggestion. Um, okay, where were we? That would maybe be the best move they could do at this time. I would agree. Again, not knowing the technical difficulties behind that. I haven't left any kind of negative feedback on Steam because at the end of the day, this is a smaller studio and I sadly expected this to be the case. <laughs> wow. Okay. I wish I, I wish it wasn't, but I'm not surprised. Congrats to the team and I know they will work through this as fast as they can so we can all just move on already. Great comment around the fur and thank you so much for taking the time to uh, add a comment to my video. Um, and I agree. I agree. Look, this might not be well received, what I'm just about to say, but it's my personal opinion and I'm going to state it. I have different levels of expectations when I buy games, dependent on who is making the game. Now, some of you may curse at me for saying this, but this is how I feel. And it not only is applicable to video games, it's applicable to anything I purchase in the real world, in IRL, okay? So, for example, if I buy a domestic, and actually, you know what? I'm not gonna use a car example because a lot of people are gonna hate me for it, okay? But let me put it this way. If I go to, if I book a room at a hotel at a one star, my expectation is immediately lowered because it's a one star. I know going in to that room, I know I'm going to have and see issues, right? And if that room costs me 50 bucks, then my level expectation is very low. But if I spend $500 on a five-star restaurant, a five-star hotel, and I go there, th again, my level of expectation is different because of the five star compared to the one star. And therefore, when I go to that five star hotel, my expectation is the room is polished and clean. The linens are fresh. The bathroom is spectacular, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What, so why am I saying this? I, we paid $35, uh, like I'm from Canada, so it was $35 Canadian, okay? In Europe, it's 39, but whatever, country you're in, you know the value of the base game. It's less than the typical price for a video game. And this is an indie studio. So my expectation going into 1.0 was based off of that. Therefore, I was expecting problems too. Now, not to this length, but then again, I wasn't expecting 225,000 people being on all at one time. I knew they were going to do way better than their previous launch, point nine, which only got 40,000 people at its peak. We're doing 225,000. That's the latest 24-hour peak. That is astronomical. That's an astronomical jump. Um, but my point is, I agree with Around the Fur here. Expectations weren't as high because this is an indie studio. I think they have 90 people, 100 people, whatever it is, their budget, their marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Number one, this is their first major launch. This isn't a AAA studio with 30 plus years of experience with 12 major titles under the belt and have gone through this 100 times. This is the first time for an indie studio. Um, so again, not an excuse but it's reality. This is what it is. They're an, indie, they're an indie studio. 11th Hour Games is an indie studio. 11th Hour Games, this is their first major release. So 
my expectations, I have patience because they're new to this. They're an indie studio. It was $35. It wasn't a hundred dollars. I didn't play, sorry, I didn't pay for early access, right? Everybody got access at the same time, right? So that comes with a certain expectation level as far as I'm concerned. So I agree with you around the fur. Great comment. And by the way, the suggestion about moving 11th hour games, considering allowing people that have problems taking their offline character onto online mode is a very good suggestion. Very good. Josh. Hey, Josh went. The great thing is we won't have to speculate forever. Judd, the EH, 11th hour game CEO said that he'll give a tech breakdown to exactly what broke after everything has been resolved, which it seems to largely be thankfully. So it looks like Josh is seeing the same thing I'm seeing. For the most part, the issues are resolved. In general, of course, a game should work on release, but I also understand there's a reason network engineer is a highly skilled full-time job. Yes, yes. This stuff is complicated and I'm always annoyed at the armchair experts confident that whatever the problem is, it's easily solvable. And the devs just refuse to fix their game out of greed, as if that even makes sense. So, th so thanks, Sammy, for at least showing some of the complexity of this stuff. Well, thank you, Josh. And thank you for being a huge supporter of the channel. I really do appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, and I agree. I it may, It's laughable when I read comments like, why didn't they, like, they're so cheap. They wanted to pinch and save money and they could have just added more servers and that would have fixed the problem. No, it's not that easy. Do you really think with 225,000 people playing the game, the developer of that game would want to sabotage the feedback and, and, and the hype of the line? Are you kidding me? 11th Hour Games and any studio for that matter wants their launch to go smoothly and successfully because it only makes the experience better, which increases the odds of players wanting to play the game and purchase the game. Why would a studio want to self-sabotage their launch? Doesn't make sense. Um, so, and I don't buy the more service would have fixed the issue. And if you would have watched this video, you would know why. At least that's my speculation. I'm not a technical person. It's a theory, uh, but it's not about more servers. It was way more technical than that. But to Josh's point, we're going to hear from Judd, and I'm sure there's going to be a post-mortem because there's one thing, and I said it in this video, 11th Hour Games is very transparent, honest, and very communicative. So uh, their communication is second to none, and I'm sure we're going to get a post-mortem breakdown and Josh is going to share, I mean, sorry, Judd is going to share with us what really happened and they'll own up to it. I'm pretty sure of that. I got a lot more comments here, but I am not going to go over. Like it was a... Um, there was a lot of a lot of discussions going on in chat. So uh, sorry on this video, and I'm I'm glad to see it, uh, but I'm not going to go and review it. I just wanted to provide another update, and unbelievable, there had a two hundred and twenty five thousand concurrent players on Last Epoch. This is getting crazier and crazier. So I wanted to give an update after my last video. I wanted to read and I wanted to share with you guys what some of the comments are from uh, from the players playing the game. And look, it's a testament to the game. A lot of people are enjoying this game and I understand why I'm playing it. It's a great game. I can't wait to log in and play the game every day. Um, so anyway, that's the update. We'll keep you posted. And yeah, it's going to be once Judd, this is all resolved and he does provide a postmortem, we will definitely be talking about that because uh, I want to give my insight on actually what really did happen. It's going to be very interesting. Anyway, 
I hope you are all enjoying the game. For those of you that are playing, I hope you're not experiencing any problems. If you are, let me know in the comments section and maybe we can pass the information on and see if we can get things resolved even quicker for areas that are experiencing higher issues than other areas. Like I said, I'm, you know, I, I haven't experienced anything major. So thank God, I guess I'm lucky that way. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it informative. And if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.